Fuck me, hold oh, Tom. What's that? It's me belt, Turkish. No, oh, Tommy, there's a gun in your trousers. What is a gun doing in your trousers? It's for protection. Protection from what? The Germans. The Germans are coming. Is it necessary to protect yourself, as shown in Snatch, one of my favorite all-time movies? What will Neo and Tesla do when German competitions, the big legacy auto OEMs, finally bring their EVs on the roads? So the point is, as the competition comes in, right, in Europe, the market share in the fourth quarter was roughly 35%. Right now, it's single digits, massive fall. Why? Because Europe implemented new rules where you have to sell EVs. As that competition comes into the US and in China, where their sales came out yesterday, big disappointment, 11.8 cars sold versus them saying they're producing over 20,000 cars in the month. Um, we think as that competition comes in, we think that's when the stock price really starts to fall as people realize they're not holding what they thought they are, uh, are holding. Are the short sellers and traditional analysts actually right that we should be worried about the competitors coming in and stealing EV sales from NIO and Tesla here? So here are my views. Generally, I believe that we will see a 100% transition to battery electric vehicles during this decade. And first, this started already in China and now boosted by Corona, we actually see the same effects happening in Europe. And this is why I think the market is actually big enough for more players than only Tesla or NIO. And when it comes to competition, in my views, Volkswagen Group is actually doing the best job in electrification of the legacy OEMs. With Herbert Dies as a CEO, we saw a change in the narrative about e-mobility from Volkswagen. Suddenly, the leadership of Tesla was acknowledged as well as the fact that electric cars are the future because they are superior to gasoline cars in many different areas and the road to fuel cells basically leads nowhere. So Volkswagen went in pretty aggressively to steer around here in Berlin. We have, uh, for instance, electric car sharing by Volkswagen using e-golf cars. The car hasn't got a really exciting performance, uh, to be honest, but the sharing service allows people to experience e-mobility without having their own expensive electric car. So it's a great marketing initiative for upcoming EVs from the Volkswagen Group, but also for EVs in general. Then we got Audi, part of the Volkswagen Group that has finally launched the Audi e-tron. And whereas the naming of the car wasn't the smartest move, to be honest, um, at least they are now having a car on the road after years of teasing and nonsense media bragging, dating back a couple of years. And so um, the e-tron is still a little bit ambivalent in my point of view. On one hand, the car is expensive and the specs are not as good as what the competitors have in the place, particularly in China. And also the sales volumes have been quite low and Audi struggles to ramp. So they also have the issues of scaling up the production. And the problem that I personally have with the e-tron is that it's just a modded gas gasler. It's not a fully redesigned EV and this becomes obvious in many ways. But on the other hand, what you need to say in, in their favor is that Audi had an interesting approach to fast charging and some of the recent sales numbers indicate that Audi is actually improving and being able to push the cars in the markets in a way. But there's still a question mark whether or not those sales are actually mostly happening to their dealers or that these are actually bought by the consumers already. So with the upcoming e-tron models, it seems that Audi is going well rather big now and have many different models coming in. And for now, again, this is mostly concept cars, that's true. But the marketing bus that they're creating around it is actually quite big. So yeah, in general, it looks promising the way they're going. However, yeah, let's take it with a pinch of salt. It's concept cars and lots of marketing bus here. Then Porsche, who is also part of the Volkswagen Group, has hit the markets with the Taycan, although it is still beaten by the Model S and even Model 3 in some of the benchmarks and drag races. It's actually a proper attempt by an OEM to enter the electrification world. And one more car from Volkswagen, the ID3, looks pretty good in my opinion. I saw them testing it actually on the roads in Berlin because they had some software problems, but it seems they will be able to solve that. So it's a great achievement by Volkswagen to finally being able to offering a car car to the masses at an interesting price point that is fully electric. So would I ever consider Volkswagen as an investment? Well, I thought about it and they're doing a great job at electrification and shifting it around. But um, my main issue though is that the main person in charge, Herbert Dies, um, he's getting lots of headwind internally by um, yeah, the company management, uh, the board, the shareholders. And also we see lots of recent management changes. The new Audi CEO seems to be an old 
petrol head as well as other politics behind the scenes that I don't really know how they are ultimately um, affecting the strategy of Volkswagen here. So for me, I would rather pass as an investment here. Then there's also Daimler and BMW and BMW was once kind of a leader in e-mobility with the i3, which I think is a cool car, but it tells you a lot that BMW managers that led the electrification movement largely quit their jobs and founded Byton, which now unfortunately failed uh, to bring their vision of the cars uh, to the market. And what is shocking about BMW is that their top executives repeatedly uttered their opinion publicly that they are not seeing a big potential for electric cars and spreading this kind of message both to employees as well as customers and even by the CEO at universities. This makes it impossible for BMW to become a, a challenger and a leader in this race. And Daimler also had an attempt with the EQC so far. I drove it in Berlin and it's not a bad car, but it has also the same problems as the Audi e-tron. It is a gas guzzler retrofitted and therefore the performance is underwhelming and it doesn't play out the benefits of an electric car. So no wonder they are almost not selling any of these cars um, right now. So if you are invested in Neo or Tesla or both, um, I wouldn't be worried about the prospects of the old elite jumping into the race. They have to do their homework first. And although they are able to produce and launch electric cars, that doesn't mean that they are successfully transferring into a new age. Audi, Porsche, Volkswagen and Mercedes are all great brands and quality cars. And in many ways, their quality is still leading. However, the parameters of what makes a great car have changed. Panel gaps are not an issue anymore. Today's demand is is beyond the car starting with the brand um, the old players are synonym for diesel gate and not for progressive electrification their offerings lack um, truly digital business models and i don't mean integrating apple carplay or oem app stores or car keys with a display seriously who buys a car because of that i'm talking about a real added value services like neo life or charging services like tesla superchargers networks or Neo Battery as a service business model. I'm talking about passionate car and investor communities around a brand and a new lifestyle connected to it. So these are the aspects that cannot be engineered by German engineering, nor can they be copied or bought. So these new challenger brands, Tesla and Neo, start bringing those things on the table and thereby have a more attractive value proposition. And it's a fact that the legacy OEMs are actually just starting to shift towards electricity because these new brands are existing and they are pushing them on many ways. And they're hitting them where it really hurts. So for instance, take the Tesla sales in the US and how it, for instance, affected BMW in the US. And I also made projections about how Model 3 and Model Y will actually conquer China too. And so Although it doesn't mean that uh, those OEMs will stop growing in their markets, um, only their growth will be much less and instead the new electric fleet will be rather eating into the existing ICE sales. So instead of worrying about Tesla and NIO sales, um, this will actually eat up the existing ICE car sales over time. And according to my projections and views, NIO will add another 500k sales in China by 2025 and become a mainstream and household brand. So this shows you how investors in Tesla or NIO shouldn't be worried about the legacy OEMs entering the markets and about the fear, uncertainty and doubt that you will hear with all of the new cars that being launched by other competitors here. Instead, the introduction of these new models uh, will actually increase the marketing for electric vehicles that will drive even more sales to Tesla and NIO in my views, because they are the leaders in the segment in terms of technology, the brand and the EV ecosystem. And the Germans can do really good cars and no doubt about it. Um, sitting in a Mercedes or an Audi, well, you certainly feel the difference towards a Tesla, maybe not to a Neo though. But when it comes to the risk factors of your investment, I would rather look elsewhere. Can Neo and Tesla actually really keep on pushing for profitability? Will subsidies get cut back at some point in time? Will the suppliers and the network stay stable? And can they execute on a business model and grow their community and a brand? And in case of Neo, can they actually convince the premium segment of a homebrew Chinese brand? So instead of worrying about competition, I think it's a good thing that competition is growing and it's showing that the market is maturing. And in the end, and this is exactly why Elon Musk has started Tesla to accelerate the world to sustainable transport.